What I want us to do right now is let's turn to Psalms 46, verse 10, and I want us to get into an atmosphere where, you know, we sang Psalms 46, we sang Psalms 46, but I want us to just for a minute get into that place where it says in verse 10, be still and know that he's God. See, I mean, everyone, all, everyone in the nations right now are shaking. There's, there's anxiety. There's apprehension. There's all that, right, that's, that's coming naturally so. It's just natural to be, to feel that way. But the Lord wants us to be in a place of stillness and in trust. In stillness and in trust, in quietness and in trust is your salvation. And so what I want us to do in preparation for the word I'm going to share is I want us to just spend a little bit of time in prayer right now, getting into that place of the perfect peace of the Lord. See, I believe the Lord has, I think Dad's word was spot on. In fact, I'm going to share quite a bit of that in my message but I know that when anxiety, when apprehension, when we feel nervous, we feel uncertain, it's kind of hard to hear the Lord and what he's speaking. Amen? And we want to get to that place right now of the perfect peace of the Lord. Ephesians 2.14 says, Christ himself is your peace. The Lord doesn't just give you peace and move away. The person of Jesus Christ himself is your peace. See, we want to see the, the, the mindset we've had for so long was, Lord, Lord, give me your peace. The Lord wants to give you a person. And that person, Christ, is your peace. So where you are right now, whether you're here, whether you're online, this is what the Lord has been instructing me to do over this last week, is turn inward. I want us to practice this because you need to walk away from this meeting just being able to do this yourself. This is not new age. If Jesus Christ dwells in you, you're not going to heaven to commune with him. You're communing with him spirit to spirit. Just hear the Lord right now saying, come away. Even the young kids, even the kids right now, I would encourage the kids right now not to draw or color or whatever. Just, just do this with us right now. You need this. We all need this, whatever age you're at. Just hear the Lord. Sense the Lord in your spirit right now. And sink yourself into Christ. Paul said to put on Christ. That word actually means sink into clothing. Let yourself sink into the inward presence of Jesus Christ right now. Take a deep breath right now where you're at. Just sit for real. Just let out the apprehension, let out the nervousness let out the anxiety and let his peace rule in your heart right now God has not given you a spirit of fear the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear but a spirit of love power and a sound mind we take authority in the name of Jesus over the enemy trying to take opportunity in this time to bring a spirit of fear upon the body of Jesus Christ. We say that we will not have fear. We will not have anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. 
We will not act based upon fear. We will not act based upon anxiety. Be still and know that he is God. The Lord is not surprised by this pandemic. The Lord is not surprised by the lack of toilet paper. He's in absolute control of everything. Now, just stay in this place of peace. Don't get into a place of passivity. Stay in the place of peace because we're going to go somewhere with this. Just receive his peace right now. Just receive the Lord's peace right now. Before we can speak to the storm that's raging in the nations, like Dad said, we have to have the storm raging in our soul calmed down by his peace. So now let's pray from this place of peace that we can hear the Lord and what he's saying. There's so many voices out there saying so many things, so much information, so much noise. But what is the Lord saying? That's what we need to hear. Now I'm going to share what I believe the Lord's saying, but you need to hear the Lord for yourself. You need to hear the Lord for yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray right now that the Lord would speak to you. Now, he might use, hopefully he'll use this message to help speak to you, but you need to hear the Lord. Even the young kids need to hear from the Lord. So, Father, we do come in the name of Jesus. We do believe you are speaking, Lord. We do believe that you are not going to be silent to your body. You are not going to be silent to what is happening, to what your plans are, to what we need to do, to the action we need to take. Because the people who know their God will display strength and take action. The people who have an inward knowing of Jesus Christ in this hour are going to be the people who give voice to say, the nations are saying this, but I'm saying the Lord is saying this and is normally contrary to the voice of millions and billions. The Lord is not operating in the, under the world system. And the body of Christ should not be operating under the world system either. We should be operating by the inward life of Jesus Christ. That inward knowing of him. And what is he speaking in this hour? So, Lord. I pray that you around the world would give your global body the confidence that they can know you intimately. They can know you deeply. We can know you deeply. The depths, they're unending. The Lord gave you eternal life. That means the life in you that you currently possess never, ever will end. It's unending. The depths never end. There's no end to the depths of God in you, in Christ Jesus. And you can draw from the depths of Jesus Christ who is in you. So, Lord, I just ask you, anoint this message, Lord. Lord, let us be able to hear your voice. Let us be able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, Lord, I pray. 
We ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak to us. I pray you would speak through me. I pray that I would be a mouthpiece of the Lord. I would be one who, as though speaking the very oracles of God, I pray, the word of the Lord. What is the now word of the Lord to the church in this crisis? Let us hear your voice, Lord, we pray. Still the storms that are raging in our soul, Lord. Still the anxiety that is raging in our soul, the apprehension, the nervousness, the fear, the worry, the concern to know God is in control. He will be exalted in the nations. He has got this all in his hands. You do not have to fear. It is the Lord of hosts whom you shall fear, and he shall be your dread. That's what he told Isaiah. You shall not fear what they fear. You're different. You have Christ in you. You shall not be afraid of what they fear, but it is Christ. It is the Lord who shall be our fear. So, Lord, we do come and just ask you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon this message. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, I want to share just what I believe, just, just spent several days waiting on the Lord. You know, again, there's so much noise out there, so much information, so much. One guy will say one thing, another person will say another thing, and they contradict each other. And There's so much stuff floating out there. What is going on? You know, so many people have so many questions. You know, is Jesus coming back yet? You know, people are wondering, are we living at the end of the age? Is Jesus returning? All these questions are coming. But we want to say, okay, Lord, what are you speaking in this hour? What are you speaking? I mean, this is the craziest time of my life. I mean, I would imagine it's the craziest time of your life. 9-11 to me is nothing compared to this. This is crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy, a crazy, crazy time we live in. In fact, I want to invite you to turn to Joel chapter 1, which is really so similar to the time we're living in. In Joel chapter 1, as you're probably aware, there was a locust invasion that came into the land of Israel. And the locusts, there was an invasion of a locust army that came and attacked the, the produce and really devastated the economy of Israel. Joel, he asked the question in verse 2, he says, Hear this, O elders, and listen, all inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days or in your father's days? I mean, I, can, I think we can all say, with this pandemic, has anything like this ever happened where the entire world shuts down and the economy is being shaken and all that can be shaken is being shaken right now? What is the Lord looking for? What is the Spirit of God saying to His church? And so what I want to do in this message is just give you a few things that I believe the Lord is saying a few things the Lord, I believe the Lord, is speaking. And you can, you can take it back to prayer and just see, if, is the Lord, does that confirm or witness with your spirit? Michael Brown did a, a survey on Twitter, and he asked about 1,500 people from all different streams in the body of Christ, and he asked this question, is do you think this pandemic, do you think it is purely natural? Do you think it was manufactured in a lab? Do you think it was a satanic attack or divine judgment? And 42% of the people surveyed said it was developed in a lab. 33% said it's a natural phenomenon. 16% uh, said divine judgment, and 9% said a satanic attack. Now, Michael Brown has a tremendous following from all different streams of the body of Christ, so it really gives you a good feel of what people think the source of this is. My personal opinion is it is either developed in a lab or a natural phenomenon. That's not really the, the point of the message. The point is, I don't believe this is a judgment of the Lord. I don't personally believe this is God 
I don't believe the Lord himself released it. And so given that the Lord, I don't believe, and I think many others, the, the majority in the body of Christ don't believe the Lord has released this thing, then the question would be, what response should we take? Because if the Lord has released it, we want to make sure we step back and let the Lord's perfect will be done. But if the Lord hasn't released it, then there's action the body of Christ needs to take. And so I'm going to talk about that here in this message. Here's the way I look at what's going on right now, is I look at it like 4D chess. On the lowest level, you have the nations of the world who basically, like us, we just want to live our best life now. We want to have a good life with our family, et cetera, or whatever. We just want to live our best life now. On the second level is you have evil men and women, evil governments, who want to take this situation and manipulate it. They want to take this evil situation and through chaos gain control. And then on the third level is you have demonic powers, the kingdom of darkness, who wants to take this and bring about world dominion, world domination, to bring about what we see in Revelation 13 of absolute authority in every nation. And at the highest level, you have the Lord who, like a master chess player, is taking what everyone's doing and he's maneuvering it with incredible transcendent wisdom to accomplish his ultimate intention. And you look at this right now, this crisis, you look at it and you think, the Lord in his sovereign wisdom has shut down every idol in the world. I don't believe God originated this, this virus. I believe God is the fourth level, the highest level of chess, is maneuvering it to say the idols of, you, of the world, sports, entertainment, recreation, vacation, travel, eating out, all of that stuff, uh, you know, has been put to an end. God has pushed pause in his sovereign wisdom to say the idols that you trust in, the money you trust in, none of that will hold in that day when the Lord is exalted. And so the Lord has pushed paused on it to get the attention of the entire world and the church. To, and I believe the Lord is saying to the church, wake up. Now we've been hearing that for 20 years. Thank the Lord for mom and dad and other voices who have been speaking that for 20 plus years. It is time to wake up. But I believe the Lord in his wisdom at the highest level as the master chess player is orchestrating this crisis to bring about his ultimate intention and his good in this hour we live in. So I want to, I want to share with you just real quick, well, hold on, that was not probably true. It won't be real quick. I want to share with you five things that I believe we, the Lord is saying we need to do in this hour is number one is dwelling in the shelter of the Most High is imperative. Let's turn to Psalms chapter 91. We probably, you know, have have heard many different people talk about Psalms 91 over the past few weeks, but Psalms 91 is, is so critical. It's so timely. It's probably one of the most important chapters for the, the time we live in. And some say Moses wrote it, but I believe David wrote this, this Psalm. But if I had to summarize it, here's my summary is, if we will dwell in the Holy of Holies, God will protect us from deadly plagues, hostile enemies, and give us angelic protection. I want to change the paradigm, though, about Psalms 91 a little bit. See, quite often you hear Psalms 91, and, you know, we quote it. I do this, so, you know, and I think we should do it. I don't think it's a bad thing to quote Psalm 91 or to pray Psalm 91. I've heard many testimonies where, Soldiers in battle prayed Psalm 91, and God sovereignly protected them. However, Psalm 91 does not say, if you pray this prayer, God will protect you. The Lord says, 
He does not say, if you quote this prayer, I will protect you. Again, I'm not saying don't do it. That's a good thing to do. It is, it is good to pray Psalm 91. But here is what the Lord says in verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. You see that? This is the condition. The condition is you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High. In other words, we want to make the Lord himself our refuge, the Lord himself our dwelling place. And the, here's the promise, is we will abide under the shadow of the Almighty, meaning God's protection. See, God will protect us if we make our number one priority in this crisis to dwell in the Holy of Holies. So people are asking, well, should we go, you know, store up food or get water or, you know, start a garden or, you know, get ammunition, whatever. People are asking all these different things. What should we do? The number one thing the body of Christ should be doing right now is developing a secret place, holy of holy relationship with the Lord. See, David said, if we will make the Lord our dwelling place, he will protect us. Now, let's look in verse, uh, verse 7 of Psalm 91. We sing about this. I love this here. This is so incredible. The protection of the Lord. A thousand may fall at your side. And we don't want, obviously, no one wants a thousand to fall at our side or 10,000 to fall at our right hand. No one wants anyone to perish. But the Lord is saying to his people, Though the world may be affected by this, though a thousand on your right and 10,000 on your left, the masses are being affected by this, it will not approach you. Why? Because you quoted Psalm 91? Because you prayed Psalm 91? Again, quote it and pray it all you want. But even more, verse 9, because you have made the Lord my refuge even the most high, your dwelling place. See, the, the refuge we're looking at, the dwelling place we're looking at is the Lord himself. It is not a place you go. See, I used to think, okay, if I've got to get into the presence of God, if I've got to get into the Holy of Holies, I need to go to church. Now, I'm not saying don't go to church, obviously. Or I need to go where the anointed worship team is. Or I need to go where the glory of God is. And I want you to see, that is not the way the Lord wants us to think. We have Jesus Christ dwelling on the inside of us through the Holy Spirit. We don't have to go here and go there and go everywhere running down to try to get in the glory of God. You have the glory of God in you. What you need is not to go running everywhere, but to go deep inwardly into your spirit where Jesus dwells. What an incredible gift we have. You are the Ark of the Covenant. David would literally go into a tent where the Ark of the Covenant was, where two cherubim were covering the Ark, and the glory of God rested on that Ark, and he would worship the Lord and praise the Lord in that tent. David would have to go somewhere, but as a new covenant believer in Jesus Christ, you don't have to go anywhere, you go inward. You go inward. I believe the Lord would say to his body, Come away with me, my beloved, into the secret place, deep into your spirit where I dwell. Come away, my beloved, and commune with me deep here in the Holy of Holies. If you make this your lifestyle, God will protect you. That's the promise, incredible promise he gives us. See, I, I just want us to go through here just, just real quick. Some of the promises God gives us. In verse 3, the Lord says, He will deliver us from traps we didn't even know about. In verse 3, He says, He will protect us from every deadly pestilence, including the coronavirus. 
That doesn't mean you don't wash your hands. It doesn't mean you act dumb. None of that. It means you can trust the Lord that if you will do the one thing he asked for of making him the person of Jesus Christ, your dwelling place, where, he, where you live in the Holy of Holies, you live from the life of Jesus inside of you, God promises to protect you. What an incredible promise. Verse 4, the Lord will give you angelic protection to cover you, protect you, guard you, and keep you from injury, harm, and premature death. Verse 4, the Lord's faithfulness to us will be a shield, a protection. God's faithfulness to us will be a shield, a protection. I heard, I heard this week on a podcast, it was Kevin Queen. He pastors a church in Nashville. He shared this revelation that I had never, ever heard. It was incredible. Have you ever thought about this? When the children of Israel were instructed to build the tabernacle, they had to put porpoise skin on the, top, on the top of the tabernacle above the tabernacle. Have you ever thought about that? I've never thought about that. Where did they get the skin of a dolphin? I mean, they're in the wilderness. You can't just like go to an oasis and find a dolphin. And he said, what happened is when they crossed over the Red Sea, when the Red Sea dried up and the dolphins were, were on the ground... They picked up the dolphins and took them with them. And then in the wilderness, they put the skin of the dolphin on top of the tabernacle so that when they looked up to the Lord in the meeting place where they would meet with the Lord, they would be reminded of God's faithfulness in the past, knowing he will be faithful to them in the future. That was incredible. I wish that would have come to me. That was I would have been, no, I'm kidding, but incredible insight there. God's faithfulness. Think about the way the Lord has led you. Think the way the Lord has been faithful to you. Think about the way the Lord has answered prayers. Think about the promises he has made. He has not brought you this far just to leave you. God is going to protect you. His faithfulness to you is a shield. The Lord, verse 5, the Lord is going to deliver you from every bit of fear and terror that comes in the night. Verse 5, he will protect you from every weapon used in a physical war. Verse 6, he will keep you from invisible pestilence, including the coronavirus. He will be a shield for you against destruction. He's going to guard you from what is affecting the masses. See, no evil will come near you, including this virus. The Lord will give you long life and satisfy your desires. What an incredible passage of Scripture. What an incredible promise. We have one thing the Lord is looking for. That shows you God's heart of fellowship. God's heart to have a relationship with you. God's heart to have intimacy with you. The one thing we are to do right now. What, okay, what is the Lord saying? What does the Lord want me to do? What does the Lord saying for me to do, to take action, you know, yeah, there's all these things in terms of prepping and all that, but the number one thing God would say is develop a secret place relationship with the Lord here, that time of communing with the Lord. What is God speaking to you personally? James Gall shared a dream that I thought was so absolutely right on this week that the dream, I'm just going to just keep it short, but basically the dream was that, that we are to build an ark of God's presence that's going to protect us from this crisis and the coming crisis. And when he woke up from the dream, he had described it as there was a word resting on me as in the days of Noah. I want to give us a different perspective of the days of Noah. Jesus said the, the coming of the Son of Man will be just like in the days of Noah. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah went into the ark. And we always look at it and go, okay, the world is going to be living for themselves, living for pleasure, living for all that they would do. And then destruction from the Lord is coming. Now, all of that is true. But we've never really looked at it and said, well, 
there is actually a remnant God is preparing to build an ark of safety. And I believe Psalm 91 is giving us the blueprint of how to build the ark. We're not building a physical boat. We're not building a physical boat to hide our families in and the animals in. We are building a spiritual fortress called the dwelling place of God, the Lord himself being our dwelling place. And God says, I will protect you if you do that. This is the time to build that ark. You know, we, we said way before any of this crisis came is, is you know, the, the, in the days of Noah, they had never even seen rain before. You know, he's building an ark, he's building a boat because rain's coming and they're like, what is rain? I mean, just think, think of this crisis right now. You know, we, you know, you think about in our history and the way the Lord has prepared us and the Lord has been leading us to make ourselves ready. And we were like, okay, what's coming? We don't know what's coming. Why do you guys keep talking about get ready, get ready, wake up? I think this shows us, okay, God has been speaking to us. Things we don't even know about are coming upon the earth. I, in a million years, could have never thought of a pandemic causing the entire world to shut down. It's crazy. But God has been speaking to us, get ready, build your ark, develop an intimate relationship with me, get oil for your lamp. The times we are living in are being shaken. God is going to shake everything that can be shaken. But Psalms 91 is a blueprint for us. I love the story of John G. Lake. And John G. Lake was a man who lived by the life of Jesus Christ. And when the bubonic plague hit the world, John G. Lake was so confident, and I'm not, this is one of those do not try at home kind of things. I'm not saying do this, but I'm telling you, this is where we need to get in the days ahead. Is John G. Lake was so confident in the law of, of life in Christ Jesus, he said, no germ can have any authority over me. Now, we're not there. I'm not there yet. Don't try this at home. But I'm saying we need to, I'm not so focused on the germs, but the focus on the life of God flowing out of us is he would take the victims and he would bury them. And, and then, you know, later a ship from, I think, England came over and they said, what, you know, he lived in South Africa. He's like, what are you doing? What's your secret? Tell us, you know, you should be dead right now. And he said, my secret is I live from the law of life in Christ Jesus. And when the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus flows out of my spirit into my soul, it affects every pore in my body. Germs cannot live on this body. And he actually said, take some of the foam that's coming out of the mouth of the dead bodies and put it on my hand and you'll watch the germs die. They did it. And the germs died. He was never affected by that. Again, don't try that at home. Don't go, you know, lick a gas pump or whatever at the, you know, getting gas and say, well, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, that, that's, that's silly. But what I'm saying is we want to be so confident in the, in the spirit of life that lives in us that, that no matter what happens, now that doesn't mean don't wash your hands. I'm washing my hands. In fact, I, I watched a video this week that taught me how to wash my hands better than I've ever known. I, I'd had no idea I was washing my hands wrong until I watched this video. But I, I learned how to wash my hands, so, you know, better. But, you know, definitely wash your hands. Definitely wash your hands. Be wise. But no, be confident that the very power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside of you. You have the power of Jesus Christ inside of you. You cannot be shaken when you live from his life. Number two, it is imperative that we live by the inward voice of God in our spirits. It is imperative that we live by the inward voice of God in our spirits. The Lord gave me this warning. Those who live by human wisdom in their soul, rather than by the inner intuition in their spirit that comes from the Holy Spirit, 
will be deceived and led astray in this hour and in the days ahead. I'll tell you one thing about the voice of God. It's usually a complete contradiction to human wisdom. And so if we're operating, now I tell you, it, this, this is a challenge for me. I am an analytical person. I'm a computer programmer. I, I'm an engineer by, by schooling and all that. I'm a very analytical person. So human wisdom is what I operate in, and normally that's my default mode of operation. But human wisdom is the complete opposite usually, not always, usually of the voice of God in your spirit. See, are we going to live from the soul are we going to live from human wisdom, human reasoning, my thoughts, my opinions, what I think is right, what I think is this, what I think is that? Or are we going to live by the inward knowing that comes from the Holy Spirit? See, when you get everything quiet, if you've got Christ in you, there is an intuitive knowing in your spirit. That is the voice of God. What is the Lord speaking? See, you know, wisdom and all that. And I'm not saying don't, don't gather information. I'm not saying don't get wisdom. We need, we need wisdom. We don't need to act on wisdom, though. We need to act based on the inner intuition that comes from the indwelling Holy Spirit. See, I believe we are living in a time where this is becoming more than a good thing to have in a church service. You know, for so many years, we would say, we want to hear the voice of God because we want to have a great church service. We want to be a charismatic, we don't have a charismatic experience. You know, this, is, this makes church so much more fun to hear the voice of God. Now, all that's true, and we, don't, we need to keep doing that, but I think we're moving into a time where if we don't hear God's voice, it literally could be a matter of life or death. I'm serious. We're moving into that time. It is imperative. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. It is imperative that we learn how to hear his voice. It's like that worship song. If you say go, we will go. If you say stay, we will stay. It's not you, you know, we want to put it into a formula. We want to put it into an equation and say, a plus B equals C. The Lord never, ever works that way. Rarely will the Lord do something the same way twice. In our human wisdom, we want to box God in and put it into a formula, put it into an equation, put it into something we can do, and the Lord does not work that way. So if you're trying to use your analytical mind to follow God, you are going to be led astray. God is in your spirit. God speaks to your spirit. God communes with your spirit. Your spirit has an inner knowing called intuition, that inward knowing of what you need to do in each situation, that if you will quiet the voices in your soul and go deep to say, Lord, what are you speaking? What are you saying? You can hear the voice of God. Usually he doesn't speak in audible voices, Usually, it's from the communion you have spirit to spirit. Number three, which dad stole my message. Um, no, actually, what happened was the Lord gave this to me, um, I think, Wednesday morning and gave it to dad Wednesday morning. And we hadn't shared until that time of prayer that night. So the, I just want to say that because this is what the Lord has given to both of us individually. Number three is this pandemic will end quicker than most expect. I believe that. I really do. And I've seen the reports and I've seen the data and I've seen the projections and I've seen all of that. And I, I don't want to give anyone false hope. That's the last thing in the world I want to do is give anyone false hope. But I believe the Lord is going to end this pandemic quicker than most people expect. And, and Dad talked about it 
briefly, he, you know, he, the, the disciples were in the boat with Jesus. I feel like that's exactly where we are. People are crying out, where is the Lord in this? Where is the Lord in this storm? Where is the Lord as this pandemic spreads? The Lord's right there in the boat. And our intercession is saying, Jesus, wake up, do something. But I believe the Lord would say to his body, you do something. When Jesus got up, the first thing he did is he said to the storms, peace, be still. The body of Christ who has the indwelling life of Jesus Christ connected to the head is to be the voice of God in the earth. We're to be the voice of God, connected to the head. Paul said, we have the mind of Jesus Christ. He, what he's saying is this, the body of Christ connected to the head, Jesus Christ, by the indwelling Holy Spirit, we have the thoughts of God. We have the mind of God. We know, okay, Lord, we only want to do what you're speaking. We only want to do what you're saying. If this pandemic has been released from you, we're going to let it run its course. If it has not been released from you, what are you saying? What are you speaking? And I believe the Lord is, would say to the body of Christ, speak to the storm as my very voice and tell it to be still. Let's turn to Mark chapter 11. I think we've forgotten something the Lord said that we need to be reminded of once again is that he's given the body of Christ the authority. Now authority comes by the measure of Jesus Christ that dwells in us. We can't be presumptuous with this. We can't just speak to any old thing that we want done and say, in the name of Jesus, be gone. It's, it's the measure of Christ that we have in us. Mark 11, verse 22. This is what the Lord challenged me this morning or, or a couple mornings ago. Do you still believe this scripture? I want you to know a, a word of faith preacher did not say this. And we've seen the abuses in the word of faith movement. The name it, the claim it, all of that. But they, they're just quoting what the Lord himself said. Dude, does the body of Christ still believe that we can speak to the mountain in faith and it be removed and cast into the sea? Do we believe that anymore? See, could we become the very mouthpiece of God where the Lord uses, like Jesus in the boat, as if it's his very own voice saying to this pandemic, raging in the nations, peace, be still. Do we believe we can do that? Not just praying a prayer, God end it. Maybe the Lord wants us to not pray that way in this time and to be the very voice of the Lord that says, peace, be still to the pandemic. I'm not talking about presumption. I'm not talking about, you know, we're just going to, we, you know, it's, we've got to hear the mind of the Lord, but having the mind of the Lord, having that full submission to the Lord, having that full awareness of what he's doing in this situation by that communing relationship, spirit to spirit, out of intimacy with the Lord. What are you saying? What do you want us to do? What's the strategy? The Lord would say, be the very, as the body of Christ filled with my life, be my voice like it was in that boat. And say to this pandemic, peace, be still. See, the Lord said in, in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, he said, have faith in God. And a better translation is have the faith of God. So what we see the Lord doing in the boat is the way the body of Christ needs to operate more. Speak to those things. He says, truly, I say to you, this is, this is true coming from the lips of the eternal Son of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea. Whoever says to this pandemic spreading in the nations, be removed and taken from the nations. And does not doubt in his heart. We want to get doubt and unbelief out of our heart. 
You want to get doubt and unbelief, humanistic wisdom. That seems crazy. Yeah, it does. God does not operate under the current world system. God is transcendently far above. God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to confound the strong so that he alone would be glorified. What if the body of Christ in this hour says, we believe Mark 11 still applies. We believe this pandemic has not been sent from the Lord. We believe we have authority in the name of Jesus to speak to this pandemic. And if we will not doubt it in our heart, but we say, be removed and peace be still, that it will be done. Where has that kind of faith gone in the body of Christ in this hour? May we get it back. May we be the very body of Jesus Christ on the earth in this hour, in this time. But he says, if you believe that what you say is going to happen, it will be granted to him. Again, this has been abused. This is not meant to be a scripture that we name it and claim it. That's not what this is about. This presumptuous thing that we're just going to, we want this done, so we're going to speak to it and be removed. That's not what the Lord is saying. The Lord was preparing his body, knowing that his spirit would dwell in us, knowing that his people would be the very body of Jesus Christ on the earth. He was preparing his body to say, have the faith of God. This is the way I operate. And you connected to me, the head, are to operate in the very same way. So I believe the Lord is calling his church, speak to this pandemic and tell it to be still in Jesus' name. It's not a faith formula. It's coming from the Lord. I believe that as suddenly as, as, suddenly as this pandemic began, it will suddenly end. I believe that. I don't know if you saw the prophecy by Chuck Pierce, but in September 2019, Chuck Pierce, who has a, an, an accurate track record of prophesying, he said that the nations would come into turmoil until Passover, April 8th through 16th. Then on January the 26th, uh, January 26, 2020, he gave a prophetic word that a massive plague-like invasion would test us through Passover. I really do witness with this. I really believe the Lord is going to use his body to end this pandemic. Can we believe God? I know, it, I, know, I know it sounds crazy. My analytical mind is up here going, what are you saying? Shut up. And my analytical mind is going crazy up here going, what if it doesn't come true? What if it doesn't happen? What if it, you know, tell this mind to be quiet and live from the spirit. Number four is this pandemic is a true test for the church. See, I mentioned the four levels of chess. The Lord at the very top level is using this crisis to test the church. See, the Lord, after he rebuked the storm, he turned to the disciples and he said, Why are you afraid? Ye of little faith. The Lord wasn't doing that to make them feel bad. He wasn't making them trying to feel guilty. He was trying to use that situation to uncover something that they couldn't see. They were not fully trusting the Lord and they, that they were letting fear reign in their heart. And the Lord allowed this test to come to show them their true condition and where they were truly at. I believe with all my heart the Lord is using this crisis as a severe act of mercy to tell his church, you are not ready for the end times. This thing is going to pass. I believe it's only a birth pain, a pain that comes, subsides, but that means greater pains are coming. And I believe the Lord is saying to his church, you know, he's been trying to say it for 20 plus years. The end times are here. The end times are coming. But we're like, yeah, like in the days of Noah. Yeah, right. I mean, we didn't really say that, but we didn't really take it that serious. 
I think this is a massive wake-up call to the church to show us we are not ready. And I say that I and myself am not ready. I need the Lord to do a deeper work in me. I need to go deeper in the Lord to prepare spiritually. See, prepping is not going to help you that much in the end times. I'm not saying don't do it. What the Lord really wants is that we learn to live by the Spirit of God. Learn to live in communion with Him. Learn to live in fellowship with Him. See, this is a, trust, a test run, a dress rehearsal for what's really coming, the pressures that are really coming. I mean, how many people think we're, we're perhaps living in the end times right now? I mean, it, it, before you might have thought, okay, maybe we're living in the end times, maybe not. I think this is showing us, okay, this stuff is real. I mean, we're really living at the end of the age. I, I you know, and we've got to be prepared. We've got to be ready for that. You know, how many of you are thankful for the word Patricia had in 2017? The train of his presence is moving, but we are not ready. I mean, think about that. Think about the crisis we're currently in and how the Lord spoke to us and he said, you need two years of intense training because you are not ready. Think about that. You know, I just remember that the first six months of, of, those, of that training process, it was like week after week, God bringing a hammer, God bringing in a harsh word, God bringing, you know, just this hammer to just, just, you know, really speak to us what's coming, you're not ready. What's coming, you're not ready. And I know people got tired of hearing that. I got tired of saying it. Dad got tired of saying it. But we knew it was the Lord trying to wake us up, trying to prepare us. How many realize now, okay, thank the Lord you were in our face speaking to us because we had no idea this was coming. And so, you know, one of the things we're starting in September is we're starting Forerunner School. And you, we've actually got a website now. Just go to forerunnerschool.org. You spell four, F-O-R-E, not like you do the number, forerunnerschool.org. We're starting in, in September, and the Lord is basically saying to us, you've got to prepare the church. This, what we're seeing right now, the church is not ready for the end times. We're not ready. Now, I, and I said, I believe this, this pandemic is going gonna, is gonna to calm down. I believe we're going to enter into a more peaceful time. But that peaceful time is not meant to go live in comfort. It's to prepare for what's coming in the hour that's ahead. And so I want to invite you to, to join Forerunner School. You need to be ready. we got 18 months of teaching that are designed to make the church ready, and not just to make us ready to hide away from the Antichrist, but to be a voice of God that cries out in the wilderness, make straight the path of the Lord. We've been on a journey for many years preparing and, and studying and, and getting, you know, the Lord doing works in us, and we want to just share that with as many people as we can. So check out forerunnerschool.org. This Current pandemic is a dress rehearsal for what's coming. And we, as a body of Christ, cannot go back to life as usual, life as normal when this comes to an end. We are on a training path to being made ready. The Lord will get what he wants. You know, people have said, well, is Jesus coming back soon? Absolutely not. Well, how do you know that? Because I can say, I can look at the church and I can say the church, including me, is not ready for him. God is going to get his ultimate intention accomplished. The bride will be made ready around all the nations, and we're not ready right now. And that's not a condemning thing. It's a truth. It's a, I mean, I, if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear why, but... I'm not ready. We're not ready. We need the Lord to do a deeper work in us. See, Jesus' dad referenced the scripture that the hour of testing, I will protect you from the hour of testing. This currently is not the hour of testing. It is an hour of testing. 
It is an hour of testing. This hour is going to end, I believe, sooner than we think. But it's a dress rehearsal for what is coming. See, at the beginning of the year, I preached two messages called the Decade of Decades. That tw the 2020s would be a decade of decades. I had no idea this would happen, this pandemic would happen of just a few months in to the 2020s. It actually started even before that in China. But just to think, all that I shared in those two messages, the decade of decades, I would recommend that you go back and listen to those messages in light of this pandemic is that there is a move towards global government for the year 2030. And that, you know, everything is moving towards that path. We've got to be ready. This is going to be a very turbulent decade. This is going to be a very turbulent decade. So we need to be ready. We need to be prepared for what is coming. Sorry, but I'm going to use a little bit of nerdiness here. As a software developer, I'm used to seeing bugs in software. See, what happens is you develop software, and then when you d finish developing the software, you test it, and you really try to bring it through hard situations, challenging situations, to find the bugs in the software before you release it. I believe right now the Lord is looking at the church and saying the church is filled with bugs. And again, that's not meant to make people feel bad. I look at myself, look at, just examine yourself, examine your reaction, examine where you're at. Do you feel like you really know the Lord? Do you feel like you're being shaken? Do you feel like you have anxiety and apprehension and things like that? See, the measure that we are being shaken in this current crisis is the measure that the kingdom of God is fully in us. Because everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. But we are receiving an unshakable kingdom. That is Jesus Christ within you. The measure of Christ that has been released into your heart, into your soul, that controls you, that measure will determine whether or not we're moved and shaken. And I can just look at my own life. I can look at my own situation and go, man, there's still so much more the Lord needs to do. Again, that's not being hard on myself. I'm like, God, I've got to go hard after you. I've got to know the Lord. I just want to say this, if you feel like you haven't really been using the, the time you've been given to know the Lord, there is an on-ramp right now. Just imagine you're on a highway and there's an, there's an off-ramp you can get on or an on-ramp you can get on that will take you into knowing God if you'll jump on it right now. This, this, this storm is going to calm down. It's going to go back to a little bit more normal than we're, you know, like we're used to. Probably not as normal as it was, but it's going to go back to a little bit normal. And I want to encourage you, make it uh, the highest priority of your life to buy oil for your lamp. Matthew 25, a wise virgin. You cannot buy oil on the run. You cannot buy oil on a, at like a fast food restaurant. You've got to spend time developing an intimate relationship with Jesus. You cannot do it fast. You can't do it in a panic. Start now going deep in the Lord. In 96, I've shared it many, many times, but I'm just going to share it again. I, the, the only time I've ever seen Jesus, I believe, in a dream is he appeared to me and he said, my people do not know me. And he was grieved by it, Gr deeply grieved by that fact. My people do not know me. This is an hour to know the Lord. This is an hour to know the Lord. Daniel said, talking about the end times, the people who know their God will display strength and take action. The people who don't know God, even though they're born again, even though they're saved and going to heaven, the people who don't know God are going to be shaken for what's coming. This is an hour to go deep in the knowledge of God, deep in the intimate knowledge of God, deep in communion with him. Number five, and I, I, it's kind of a basic uh, repeat of something is, 
Number five, the praying church can end this pandemic. And I've said it again, but quoting Joel too, but in, in Joel, what we see is a similarity between what was happening in Joel's day with what is happening in our day. The locust plague invaded Israel, crippled their economy, and this pandemic is hitting our economy. But a lot of scholars believe this locust invasion was only a foreshadowing of Babylon coming into Israel years later. I'm not saying we're going to come under an invasion. I'm saying that, that this pandemic is a trial run for greater pressures to come. I mean, it's even hard to even imagine that, but just read the scriptures. Things are not going to get easier. And so we need to be wise in this time. We need to be wise to go so deep in the Lord and to be what God is looking for for his end time church. See, now is the time for fasting. Now is the time for weeping. Now is the time for the priests, the leaders, the body of Christ to weep between the porch and the altar and to say, spare your people, O God. That's what happened in Joel's day. The locust plague came in and God called them to sacred assemblies. God called them to solemn assemblies of prayer and fasting. And they began to take their place in intercession. They began to take their place crying out to God, spare your people. And the Lord specifically said, who knows if I will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind me. And then he goes on and he says, I will restore all the years the locusts have eaten. Just based on that, based on that scripture in Joel, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we don't see our economy rebound like never before. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we don't see an economic turn after this crisis ends like we haven't seen before. Just knowing the way the Lord works. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see maybe this is the beginning of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The last, final, third great awakening God has been promising. I believe we're going to see those things. I believe we're, you know, I believe we're going to see an outpouring of the Spirit of God. So let me say this to us. This prayer assignment that we're engaging in is perhaps our most important prayer assignment we've ever had. Perhaps. I know, I'm not going to say it definitely is. I, perhaps it is. I want to encourage you to pray. I want to encourage you to even fast. I want to encourage you to participate. Will we take our place? Will we stand in the gap? Will we speak to the storm and say, this must end in the name of Jesus? We are not tolerating this. See, I believe we will see the tide turn in this pandemic when we in faith join together with Jesus Christ the head and we say, we, we say as, the, as if the very voice of the Lord, his body, peace be still. I want us to take this prayer assignment more serious than we've ever taken any prayer assignment before. And we'll share in a minute just some details of how it's going to work, but I just want to just say, let's be on the wall. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's believe. Okay, let's shake off the apathy and the unbelief and the doubt. Let's believe that if for a minute God might use us. See, we need the, we need the perseverance. There's a story of Elisha, and he went to the king of Aram in Israel, and he gave him an arrow, and he said, strike the ground to defeat your enemies. And the king took it and only hit the ground three times. And Elisha said, and I'm, I'm just doing it from memory, but I'm, Elisha said, you should have struck the ground seven times. See, Elijah, not Elisha, Elijah in a different circumstance said rain is coming on the earth. And there was a time of drought. Rain is coming into the land of Israel. Now, he didn't just say that and just wait for God to do it. He went and he got down in a birthing position to bring travail to, to it. And he got up and he looked and he said, okay, I don't see, or his servant got up and looked, I don't see anything coming. Elijah went back into travail and began to pray again and again and again. And his servant looked up and said, 
I, I still don't see anything coming. Elijah went back a third time and began to travail and began to cry out to God. And then his servant said, I begin to see the cloud coming in the form of a man's hand. And then rain came to Israel. My point is, we are going to labor in persevering prayer. We're going to labor in intercession, standing in the gap until the tide turns in this pandemic. Amen. We're going to do it. The body of Christ globally, I believe, is going to do it. We're going to see the Lord bring a shift in this entire thing. And then what's going to happen is that the world is going to say, well, it was this, it was because of this, it was because of that. No. We know it's because there's a praying church that is the body of Jesus Christ on the earth who has authority over every disease, over pestilence, over these things, and we took our place in prayer and said, this shall not be on our watch. Let's be those kind of people. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to end our live streaming here. And so let's, let's stand real quick and just, just let the Lord. This is our finest hour. <laughs>